Hi guys, uh, look the team at Bright have uh, designed and manufactured uh, some new surf casting rigs. Um, they're not difficult but um, a lot of the shops um, aren't really familiar how to use them. So just I want to run through them uh, with you. Now if you went into a local tackle shop and you were going to go surf casting, that's probably a really easy rig. Right? It's basically a flash rig that guys would use in the boat. On most occasions that's going to be fine, it's going to work. But there'd be the odd occasion where those fish are going to be sitting in a gut or a hole and just a little bit further out. And you know, on those days, this rig's probably not going to cast that far. So what we've designed is things we call a long cast rig. All right, so that's one of them there. A real easy rig. So we'll just rip that to pieces and show you how it works. So these come with two traces and what they call a long cast pulley rig. So that's going to slide on here like so. Right, now what you've got, you've got a floating swivel, and if you have a look here, we have a fixed swivel at the end, and we have a floating one. Right, so we're grabbing the floating one, and we're attaching that to the end of our line. Now you can actually tie that, but an easy way is to actually have a snap clip, which is really easy to put on. So, if you look at that now, and the reason we call it a pulley rig is because of that system there. So you imagine that once we put the trace, the bait is actually going to sit hard up against this little mechanism. So, we'll grab one of these traces. Now we'll just undo that snap lock, clip it in there. Just take a little bit, of, a little bit of slack up to make it a little bit easier. Right. So once I put the bait on, which I'll show you how to bait. We have two hooks, we have a, a bottom hook and we have a keeper hook. Now that keeper hook, surprisingly, could actually catch about 20% of your fish. So it, it is quite an important component. So once that's baited, basically this hook is going to be exposed and it actually sits in the big hook, the larger of the two, is going to sit right in behind that tab. Not, not inside the nylon, on the outside. So basically when you cast, what happens, and I'll put it here, is the water pressure pushes the impact shield like so and releases the trace. The idea behind the floats, these have a little stopper on them. As long as they're wet, you can actually move those stoppers wherever you like. So you can position your, your floats. So say I was putting a whole pulley on, then obviously I need to move them out of the way. So when I'm rigging that, that bait could look like this, right? And then I'll slide those like those little floats, right down to the bait. Now contrary to popular belief, you know, I've had snapper take a bait like that, the floats, the whole lot have been in their mouth, so they're not put off by it. Um, some of the baits there, I don't know whether the, um, the float actually has a huge amount of potential um, is lifting the bait from the, uh, from the bottom, but what it does, it actually gives a little bit of movement in the wash. Um, and I think the fish are sometimes attracted to the movement, attracted to the colour. Um, some of our other rigs have, um, have a flasher rig on. Um, look, there's no right or wrong. These are just many options that, uh, that you know, one can use. So what I'll do now is I'll bait these, uh, these up and, um, and show you how that's done. Many ways of cutting a bait. I, um, some people don't like the tail, I do. And, and I don't generally put out a big bait. Um, generally cut it on an angle. I like to expose that gut cavity. All right, so my first bait would be here. Then probably what I do is to get good value out of your pulley, probably the second bait would go along here, and then I've got a third bait going that top piece there. So out of a pilch, you actually get you know, um, a reasonable amount of baits. Now, probably the one important thing is don't be, um, don't be shy in having those hooks protruding. Don't try and hide them. Now the fish are not, in, not worried about that. So I would probably put that first hook through like that. All right, and I'll get my second hook. And I would go through, through like this. And basically I want that, the second hook, because I'm going to use a thing called bait elastic, which I'll show you. So I don't want that second hook protruding any further down from the tail. So I get a bait elastic, and don't be shy in using this. Bait presentation is really important. As far as I'm concerned. Alright, just a couple of little, little half hitches. Pull that tight, it's elastic, it'll break. So, 
So both those hooks are relatively proud. So when I'm going to put that on that on that um, that pulley rig, you're going to see there's plenty of room for that to slot under. Right, and it's going to sit there nice and tidy. Right now we'll do a uh, we'll do a squid bait for you. Again, now I like my baits really slim and nice and long. Once again, just very very personal. It's Never used to be really fond of uh, squid, but now there's there's a lot of uh, almost uh, human consumable squid. It's very very white. It's uh, it's and it's fantastic. So once again, just through the top there, like so. Sharp little hooks these, and the other one there, like so. Again, a relatively slim line bait. Just the bait cotton just allows you, to, it'll hold the bait on a little bit longer. You know, sometimes a few pickers out there, crabs and um, the odd little sprats and what have you. So, squid's pretty strong anyway, but just uh, it'll just hold it together a little bit nicer. Sometimes when you don't do that, you know, you get the first fish, first fish will come in and it'll grab it, and they would tend to actually rag the bait. So the whole bait is pulled down, and there's not a lot, not a lot holding that bait on. So. By using that bait elastic, it's going to hold everything everything together. Right, so, and then, so a rig like that, I would probably, my idea with that, I would get those little pieces of rubber, slide them down, move them all the way down, and that's going to give, it's going to lift that off a fair amount off the bottom. Right, if I move that fragment, say, can I move that back to a halfway position, then obviously that's not going to have the same lifting potential. So ideally, slide it down, bit of colour, more movement, going to increase your, your chances. An average caster, this could give you 20 metres distance, an increase of 20 metres, so it's huge. Now you imagine this one here, I've got two baits on here. As I cast, those things flow around and you just, there's a huge reduction in the distance you're going to cast. Um, right, we've been through the, uh, the pulley rig. Now this is a slight, um, slight alternative rig. It's what we call a pendulum rig. Now uh, pendulum rig is a different style of casting. Uh, most of, 90% of our fishermen would use what they call an overhead thump, which is where they would have their rod, they lay their sinker on the ground and bang, the big cast. Right? Pendulum cast is when you want to um, increase your distance and you want to walk out and say we've got a beach like Ocean Beach, um, where you might be able to wade you know, 20 or 30 metres to, and then cast. Um, if you use that normal cast, you're actually putting your sinker and bait in the water and there's a hell of a lot of resistance to actually get that through the, through the air, really hard on your gear. So what guys have, have, um, have developed overseas is a pendulum cast where the, where the line is swung around their body, everything's kept out of the, out of the water um, and it's that swing that actually loads the rod and they get incredibly um, long distance. Um, so the pendulum casters are looking for extreme distances, so they want everything really, really small and compact. So we designed this, um, this pendulum rig. So very, very similar to the uh, pulley rig, it's only the, um, the bait release that is different. So if we just open that up, right, remember on the other one we had this black impact shield. We've now gone to a small thing called a pendulum release clip. And it works on the same principle, it's that little, ta little tab there. All right, so the, so the hook is gonna come down and hook under there. All right, so it's really small. And that little tab is what's gonna hit the water and actually release and turn that up and the, and the hook will come free. Really smart little, uh, little mechanism. Quite fiddly, but for the, for the guys doing the pendulum cast, it's almost, you know, it's a, they have to use it. So, not going to go into baiting that up. That's just another uh, another rig that we do, right? Specifically for those uh, for those pendulum casters. Now we'll grab that. Grab a rod stand.
just have a little quick look, look at that. So that's going to so pull your impact shield down. It's got to be hard down, right? And basically, if you have a look at that, you'll see the nylon. So basically, that's there. When it hits the water, pushes up and releases. You see the nylon move right across. All right, put that right hard down. Your large hook, nice and exposed. Hook that in there. Pull that nice and tight. And we're looking good. Then just put a little bait feeder on and wait. If you're out there and you've cast out, the prong sinker allows you to actually put a nice bend in the tip. Right, so if you're not really attentive or you might be baiting and you look up, rod's still got a bend, then you have no bites. If by some chance fish comes and bites, you will find the rod will either go right over or the rod will stand up straight. So basically if I turn around, and that rod was standing like that, then man, I'd pick it up, take up a little bit of tension, wind a bit of line, wait, and invariably you'll feel that second bite. Set the hook in your way.